Uh, first off, I'd like to say thank you to Snanamuk for allowing this to happen in their territory. Um, I'll be introducing myself in my language of Nutanus. Histakshit Heshkuyat, Histakshit Ahauset, Uklasish Kwayatsapal, Umiyaksu, Late Eileen Charlson, Nuuyaksu, Late Spider Thomas, My Nani Yaksu, Tseh Pekam, Hupatu Al. Um, yes, that's my family, who I come from and where I come from. Um, it's really important for me to know that because it helps me to identify with all of my ancestors, with my grandparents and with um, everything that makes me me today. Yeah. Well, just by introducing myself there in my language and saying where I come from, you know, is the protocol and um, and all of the business that we do, not just as uh, elders and elders in training, but as youth, as children, to know where they come from. You know, for me, uh, as a residential school survivor, it took me many years to identify where I came from, even though I knew. And when I mean identify, I mean go back in history to, to know my bloodlines from my mother, from my father, from their mother, their father, and so on and so on. And to be able to have that knowledge so that when my kids are growing and they know who their relatives are, they know where they come from, they know to make those connections. Because that, to me, what I've been taught is what protocol is, is letting people know who you are, where you come from, who you come from so that you can make those connections to all those people that you meet in your life. And for me, protocol makes you strong inside. It makes you proud of who you are, but it also helps uh, mostly for identity because again, as a residential school survivor and for our youth today who are going through the same kinds of, of, of living and surviving what they're going through today, um, I've heard some of our youth say they don't know who they are or where they come from. And for me, that's, uh, that's a call to my spirit to help, to help our youth, to help kids, to help adults, you know, who are, who are, uh, who are hurting it, you know, and to be able to bring um, that kind of knowledge up front and uh, to share that with uh, Anybody and everybody that, that asks, um, you know, I work here helping kids to, to identify that. And um, I wouldn't trade it in the world for anything because it helps me to connect. It helps that circle of healing, that circle of connecting, that circle of uh, knowledge so that it may be shared, so that it may be taught, so that it may be learned. So for me, I really... Um, can't speak enough about what protocol means to not just me, but to all nations. I, I really truly believe that every nation here on the coast, every nation across this great Turtle Island protocol is important because when you go somewhere to know who you are, to be able to share that with the people you're meeting, it's a great power. It's a great power of bringing all your ancestors with you because you know who you are. And um, for me, that uh, that's true spiritual power to be able to have that recognition within your own self saying who you are. So I, I really value that. And um, it's something that helps me to help my kids so that we know who we are when we're drumming, when we're singing when we're dancing, when we're speaking, you know, and when we go out to do those things, uh, it's really important. Um, my boys are traveling to New Zealand and protocol is a really big part of their journey as they journey to New Zealand to be able to speak their protocol, but also to listen to the protocols that are coming to them from the people in New Zealand, from the Maori. So it's been a really, um, 
strong healing um, experience for us all to uh, grow together, you know, the kids to be able to give them, you know, our language. You know, I don't speak fluently, but I can understand a lot of it. And a lot of it is coming through healing. A lot of it has come back because I can take care of my spirit too, not just take uh, medicines when I'm ill or, or different things, but to feed my spirit. It's really important to me today as an elder. And uh, I say that because uh, that's what I'm, those are my steps in my, in my healing where I'm growing to be a keeper of knowledge. And from what my understanding of an elder is as somebody who is free giving of their knowledge, you know, and for me that means a lot because I've had a lot of those good people in my life, you know, and a lot of what I've learned about who I truly am comes from good people, you know, comes from good people in my life. These people have helped me to see the importance of forgiveness, the importance of connection, the importance of, of moving forward, you know, and, you know, those, uh, I don't have enough fingers or toes to uh, appreciate the amount of elders, the amount of good people in my life that have helped me to be who I know I truly am, you know, as coming from residential school, uh, I have those scars, I have those those hurts, you know, and being able to share those with my family, to be able to tell stories, to be able to tell my story because it's important that I can share my story and not let the shame, not let the energy of it steer me this way or steer me away from a direction that is um, made for me, purpose, you know, that purpose. when. When one finds purpose in their life, their life generally becomes more enjoyable. And um, for me, that's what protocol and uh, working with youth does. It gives me satisfaction in my spirit, you know, because that purpose is being lived, being breathed, and being practiced through song, um, through eating, you know, um, having you here come into my house. We call it hot with miss. We put on coffee, we put on food, and then we start to talk and share. Because when we do that teaching and we acknowledge people in our homes, we make them feel comfortable, we make them feel safe. And therefore, a conversation happens the way it's supposed to happen. And it's not uh, fabricated or, or, or you know, thought about too much, you know, because for me, um, teaching through feeding, through eating, is gathering when my family sits here at the table to be able to have a conversation about our day, you know, and also that that um, feeding is something that um, was taught to me by my grandmother with gathering, you know, that when you feed the bellies and you feed the spirits of people, of your family, it shows how much you love, how much you value people, individuals, family, you know, you can make your best meal for them. You can pull out your finest sakai salmon or your, 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 your food that you save for special purposes, for special occasions. And when good people come in, you pull it out. You know, and so, yeah, through that, through as well as storytelling to me is really important. You know, when you can sit and tell a story to, to youth, to children, to each other, and then you can relate that story to a time, you know, um, the stories of, of our dance practices and how many times we can talk we can share, we can feel free, we can ask for support, you know, and that all comes through feeding, through eating together, through sharing a meal, through blessing, through praying. I know wherever you go, when you're involved with uh, Kowas, with First Nations people, when it's a meal, it always starts with a prayer. So for me, you know, that shows so many other parts of who we are by eating because we get brought into prayer, we get brought into song, we get brought into connection. So 
um, that is something that my grandmother taught me. You know, that is something that um, in our family, you know, I know is a strength and it's something that needs to be spoken about because my grandparents are getting old and that we can't lose those teachings when we lose our elders, when we lose our grandparents. So to me, again, that's why storytelling is important. So many of my stories of who I am and who my grandparents are to me um, comes by going to hear stories being told over and over and over. And to me, that has purpose because we're oral people. You know, we, we talk, we speak from here, we connect our hands to who we are, you know, and when we speak that way, as opposed to flailing, like the different types of people in this world that speak with more about being out there than being in here, the most important journey. And so, um, yeah, I, I extend a lot of gratitude to my grandparents for seeing in me what I couldn't see at the time, you know, and I guess that's something that, um, that can be strengthened in so many of our teachings is that a lot of the times we don't see what other people see in us. And when we can feed that, when we can grow that, when we can believe in that, in those people, you know, in ourselves, and how important that is, you know, because with elders in our lives, we're strong. When elders in our lives, when they're gone, we're still strong because we got to keep on practicing that. We got to keep on speaking of it, you know, not the gossiping, not the lateral violence, but the telling a story that brings family strength, unity, connection to one another and helping other families come together and speak of similar stories in their family. Again, that brings connection. You know, for me, connection is always the correction. There's no other way to be than, than connecting with other people. Spiritual experiences, uh, cultural experiences, social experiences, you know, all of these things that we have um, that is cultural, that sometimes our young people don't see. You know, that just sitting at the table and talking in any circle, the dinner circle, drumming circle, um, circles in AA or whatever it might be, you know, these circles all have meaning and purpose. So, you know, those are just some of the things that seem to fall naturally, you know, like I don't sit and plan. These were teachings that were taught a long time ago and to have those teachings flourish, not only in me, but my kids when they're when dad's not home or, you know, they can serve their auntie, their grandma and people like that when they come in, you know, some people call it courtesy, you know, but it really is a teaching. And when we can teach that, it just brings our family unity and the strength that we have as a family to flourish because we have identity through storytelling, through, through sharing and through connecting. One of the stories and teachings that I want my family and everybody after me, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, would be a story that happened in my time that comes with uh, mystique. It comes with all kinds of the stuff that uh, our culture is based on. Um, in Heshku territory, probably about 20 years ago, um, we had a Mamashli scientists out in our territory counting um, sea otters. And these guys are out there with uh, three local brothers from, from the territories. And they're out there counting sea otters and it was a really calm day. And I guess it gets monotonous, you know, just sitting in the skiff counting and waiting for sea otters. And out of the blue, the, the, the scientist and um, they see coming two large killer whales, males, steaming full board, swimming full board towards them. And it brings a lot of excitement, a lot of, uh, it makes them stand up in their skiff because they believe they're gonna witness the, the killer whales attacking the sea otters. So they're watching now, and, but the scientist says, that the funny thing was is that the uh, sea otters weren't scared. 
you know, and they were just sitting there, flipping in their kelp, rolling around, and they didn't sound no alarms as these two big bull male killer whales got closer and closer. And finally they got close enough where they dove down and where all of the sea otters where they thought they were gonna come up underneath them and start wreaking havoc. And so they're watching these three, three uh, Kowas guys from the territory and this white scientist are watching on each side of the boat for, for, for mayhem with the killer whales and the sea otters. But nothing happened. They're still watching and they watching for the killer whales to come up now. There was still no sight of the killer whales. You know, a minute or two went by and they all looked, they see at the beach, there's two wolves at the water wet. They walk out from the water and they're up on the beach and they look back at the same time at, at the scientists and these three guys on the boat and they start shaking. They dried their fur and they walked up the beach. And the scientist seen this. He's a man of science. He's a man of facts. This is his story being told at an NTC gathering. He said, I'm a man of facts, but what I seen, I can't explain. He was, he was privileged by the creator, by our ancestors, because he works for us. And he works for us, not just up here, but from his heart too, as well, where he sees the struggles our people are going through on our foreshores, in our waters, with, with, with the resources that are being depleted. So now the scientist told this story to his science field. And he says, you can't mock me unless you live there, unless you come to see. And what this was, what this is, is an expression of transformation. When you see this happen, when you see killer whale turn into to wolves or, or deer turn into Sasquatch, these transformations are are a blessing, but they're also a, a message because transforming means things are changing. And that's what it, what, what transformation in our story, in our legends is that it's times are changing, you know? And, uh, you know, that is something that for me, because when I walk outside and I see something different, I see um, birds here for the springtime coming now or you see swallows showing up because it's June and the sockeye fish are coming, all of these transformations that nature shows us, you know, these, these stories in our paintings, these stories in the artwork and the carvings all reflect transformation, you know, that things are gonna change, you know, and it's up to us to recognize that change, you know, and be a, be a part of that change but to also um, keep intact that identity, that connection to our waters, to our lands, to our resources, because those stories, whether they were 10,000 years ago, a thousand years ago, or whether they were from 20 years ago, when they're told, when they're told, when they're shared, you know, it gives that story meaning because it's coming from this family. You know, songs, history, legends all come up from when you see transformation take place. You know, our people really, our spiritual selves, those are the eyes, those are the ears that see those things happening. And so, you know, and for me, I can only acknowledge and, 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 and breathe life into what I truly feel because that was in my territory. That was in my homeland, you know, and I live here in Nanaimo, but I can tell that story because it gives me power and it gives me insight to being part of change, you know, to adapt because being able to adapt to change means we're gonna survive, you know. And I think that story has been told out throughout first contact, residential school, through um, kids in care. You know, those transformations that are happening and those stories that need to be told 
so that we ensure, you know, that, that change, that we can adapt to that change and how a change um, for us, for me in particular, you know, change is, is healing, you know, because you're looking for a different way, a better way, you know, a, a safer way through something. So that's what it means for me, that story too. Well, this one here is really meaningful to me because it's been told by a few elders and I've seen it um, shared in different places. And that's about where I come from, from Heshkut, where, where Mamashna was first seen. Mamashna in our language means the big sails on the boat, not the people. And um, it talks about uh, Jesus in the time of the Bible and how Jesus fled to keep the story alive, to keep again, you know, the transformation that at that time was happening. And uh, Jesus knew of his demise. He knew what was going to happen to him. And he knew that the true teachings of the Creator were going to live through the people that were connected to the land, to the water. Those were the people that were going to keep those true teachings alive by sharing, by talking, by connecting. And um, Jesus knew of his demise and he said to the people on his side, what's going to happen to me is going to happen to you. So I need you to flee into the sun, the morning sunrise. And he looked on his side and he said the same thing to these people. That what's going to happen to me is going to happen to you. For they wish to destroy the true words of the creator. And I need for you to flee into the sun set. So these two bodies of people that were there with Jesus in the hill, the one he said to go into the sunrise, but creator, what if we fall off the edge of the earth? And, 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 and Jesus answers, trust in me, I will be with you on this journey. And so they journey, he says, do not stop until you meet again. So these people took off on this journey only following the morning sunrise and the morning sun, the evening sunset. Do not stop until you meet again. So they journeyed on this journey around the world. And however many years that took, tens, maybe a hundred years, who knows? But that is on the 49th parallel. And that 49th parallel of healing that comes and circumnavigates the globe comes together teachings, comes together people like me and you. And it brings the, the teaching of a circle and how powerful a circle is with the red, with the black, with the yellow, with the white, and with our spirit in the middle of it all. And bringing those things together because having those connections, having those Virtues in there is what's kept us alive today. Our people have endured so much. And for this story, this is what it is for me. It brings everything full circle. Su'wa. Those teachings come back again. You know, and for that, for me, is a story that I believe in here. You know, I believe it. I feel emotion every time I tell it because... I feel the energy of my ancestors, the, 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 the presence of my ancestors standing beside me as I tell the story. And it is something that I'll always tell because the way it was told to me as a young man and being hearing it multiple times in my life by different people, so in different walks of life in different parts of the earth, telling that same story, you know. And for me, again, it's just that, bringing the circle of life back together, bringing 
our commonalities back together because when we look what we have in common more than what we don't have in common, you know, that brings separation, whereas we can bring connection with what we do have in common. And that story will resonate in my life forever. And I will tell that story forever the same way it was told to me. <laughs>